This week's guest is Ms. Karianne Wood of Thistlewood Farms. She is such an inspiration. I know that once you get to meet her and get to know her, you are going to find her just as amazing as I do. She is a wealth of information. She leads with grace. She is an inspiration to thousands of other bloggers. She is a busy mama of four amazing children. Her husband works with her now as she serves over a million readers. I cannot wait for you to get inspired through Karianne Wood with Thistlewood Farms. Hey, my friend, it's Melanie Ferguson, your host of Creatives on Fire, the podcast where I hope to inspire you to create a profitable six-figure following online. So turn it up and listen in to amazing stories of success, along with behind-the-scenes secrets and valuable tips from, you guessed it, Creatives on Fire. Hey, my friend, I want to ask you a quick question. Do you struggle with overwhelm in your business? How about confidence? Or maybe even just knowing what the very next step is that you need to take for you to see the success you desire? I want to invite you to join me over on the inside. This is where your business will benefit from access to powerful, relevant collaborations with other creatives just like you each and every week. You'll have an opportunity to receive motivated messages every single morning, as well as access to multiple live events. These are all tools that are designed to help you grow your business, get you out of overwhelm, boost your confidence, and show you the path to success that you're looking for. I want to encourage you to go check it out today at creativesonfireinsiders.com. I'll see you over there, my friend, on the inside. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, I am super excited like I am every week, but I really, really, truly am. This week, I have a special guest, Ms. Karian Wood. She is the author, the mastermind behind the blog, Thistlewood Farms. She now entertains a readership of over a million. Yes, that is a million different eyeballs. So Karianne, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I am so full of joy to be here today with everyone. I know you are. Tell me, Tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm sure I left a lot of holes in your intro, so you go for it. <laughs> okay, so I have written the blog now for nine years. Um, I have also written five books. I've had different products lines across the United States. Um, but the heart of everything with my platform is my blog, which is why I'm so excited that we're going to do kind of a deep dive into blogging today. That is awesome. So what, Kari Ann, worked best for you at the very beginning? When you were just getting the blog started, what did that look like? Paint us the picture of getting started. Okay, so when I first started Thistlewood, really my goal was never to make it into a business. I just started the blog because actually I was kind of lonely. I needed some friends. I was all by myself. Um, we had just moved to a new area of the country and um, I was a little bit overwhelmed and I just you know, finished decorating my house and I was looking for friends. And so I started Thistlewood Farms at Christmas time. And I thought I'll, I'll just put my Christmas decorations on here and look at other people's Christmas decorations. And it was about six months in that I recognized, oh my gosh, I went to a blogging conference called Haven, which you and I just left there. Amazing blogging conference. And at the end of the blogging conference, I had met all these incredible women and they were making money from their blog. And I thought, okay, this is kind of a thing. Like, let's go. So the first thing that I decided I needed to do was increase my page views. So two tips, if you are, you know, probably right. I don't know if any of y'all are just starting your blog, but when I first went to Haven, I think I had, I don't know, maybe 10 people reading. It was me, my mom, maybe some people at random, random people at Walmart. I told about it. <laughs> 
So I thought, I need to get this readership up. So if you are at that stage in your journey, um, I have two really good tips for you. So the first thing is you have to understand the concept that in order to grow a blog, you need peeps, you need friends, you need other individuals with blogs because like grows like. So if, if you want to grow your blog, you look around, find other blogs that, you know, you respect that you like their content and, um, reach out to them. So what I did was I packaged my home tour. So I, when I say packaged, I mean, I went into my home tour. Um, I created like beautiful images with links back to different posts. And I took that home tour and I went to bloggers that were bigger than I was. And I said, Hey, you know, is do you share home tours? Is this something that you're interested in? And that's really how I started growing my blog from the very beginning was asking other bloggers to share me. So if you are listening to this and you are not in a share group with other bloggers, well, listen to the end of the podcast <laughs> and then exit and go and find similar bloggers right where you are at on the journey and join them. And together y'all will grow your blog probably more than you even imagine. So that's the first thing. The second um, way that I grew my blog was I put a lot of emphasis on my email list. And I feel like an email list from the very beginning is something that you should be paying attention to. You should be capturing. You've worked very hard to get people to come to your site. And if you've worked so hard to get them to come to your site, why don't you get them to kind of close the deal? In other words, if you look at people that visit your site like a customer and you are closing the deal with them, you are getting them to follow you in some way, whether it's by email, by Facebook, by um, you know Instagram, so they can find you again in this big, wide world. And then I sent every single blog post that I wrote out to that email list. I didn't do a weekly newsletter. I sent every single one. And it was the combination of people coming back on organic traffic and then new people finding me from other blogs. And that's really how I grew my blog at the very beginning. Totally brilliant. I knew it. So those are amazing tips. That was a very long answer, Melanie, to a short question. <laughs> Podcast is over. No, I'm kidding. That was brilliant. I love that idea. And I'm just going to tell you that I've spoken to you so many times over the years, and I learned something new every time. So this is amazing gold right there with the fact that you are reaching out to collaborate, which is my whole thing, collaboration, and then your email list and utilizing that, using your readers as if they were customers to actually benefit them. I mean, it's going to be to their benefit to come and look back at all the things you're going to provide for them. But let me ask you, what did that beginning weekly workload look like? How did you segment what you did each week? How did you keep focused and doing the right things? So the the tip that I would give anyone just starting a blog is you need an editorial calendar. I cannot stress this enough. So what I did to create my very first editorial calendar, first of all, I use, I still use like a calendar, you know, with little squares that like in a pen, a thing called a pen where you actually like write. <laughs> People don't use those very much anymore, but I love a good pen. And so um, what I did was I kind of wrote in a little, so I took a month to kind of prepare my mind for the editorial calendar. And as I was traveling through the month, I, if I came across a simple tip or an easy way I did something, I would just make a note in my little notebook that I had in my junk drawer. If I was at a restaurant, and I saw a really cool wall treatment I could redo. If um, I was shopping online and I found a product I could DIY, if, if there was a story, something that happened with my children um, that I could put in this little notebook. And then at the end of the month with all of my little things I had put into my notebook, I took those and I put them into the squares on my calendar. Now, if you can only publish once a week, I would highly suggest Saturdays. If you can only publish twice a week, I would highly suggest Tuesday and Saturday. So what you would do is you would take your calendar and fill in every Tuesday and every Saturday what you would be posting about and then use that as a guide to maybe batch your shopping trips. You could use that as a guide to batch your stories. Um, now you have an overall view of what you're doing for the month. Not saying you couldn't be flexible on that, but that was probably when I first started my biggest time saver. And it helped me really 
focus my workflow. So I didn't, because I had littles at the time, I had four little kids. And so it took a lot of time to write a blog and putting the editorial calendar together really helped me focus. That's amazing. I love that tip. An editorial calendar, can't live without it, right? Exactly. When you were growing and you saw an uptick maybe in the readership and when, just share with us, when did you know it was possible? When did you see it was a possibility to actually make a go with this, a living out of the blog? Well, I think that that moment came was the month I came back from Haven because until that point, I'm six months in, I'm putting like my toes on my blog. I mean, just, you know, I mean, super high quality content. There was no editorial calendar. It was like, woo, I got my hair done. Let's talk about it. Oh, I got a pedicure. Let's talk about it. You know, and coming back from Haven and creating that calendar really allowed me to focus myself. And I did something else too. And this is another great tip if you are a beginning blogger. I sold my own ads on my sidebar. So I applied to be a part of an ad network and I made like $30. And then I thought, why don't I just sell my own ad? So I was already, I'm a shopper. So I was already shopping at some places and I just reached out to them and said, hey, does this seem like something you might be interested in? And I sold, I applied to six companies. I pitched six companies and of the six, how many do you think I booked, Molly? Like out of curiosity, how many do you think? I think I'm going to guess five. <gasps> You've heard this story before. You already yes. know the answer, oh. Melanie. Oh my gosh. Okay, <laughs> never mind. Okay, you, <laughs> I'm not asking you more questions. You've did. heard all my stories way too many times. But um, but yes, I, I pitched six and I, five of them. And the poor person that did not say yes, I'm sure is still regretting it to this day. But so five companies and that first month I made a thousand dollars and I never looked back and I thought, whoa, this is a situation like I showed my husband and the business of Thistlewood Farms was born. Oh, that is so inspiring. That is so inspiring. So you can make money in it is helpful to have a huge audience, but just getting started, it's possible too, if you just get creative. Oh, a hundred percent. And and here's the thing. If somebody is listening to this right now and they take nothing else away from this podcast, I want them to hear this message loud and clear. It is not only like maybe you could make money. If you put your thinking cap on and you are a little creative with ideas and you think outside the box, it is 100% percent possible to make money from a blog right now. I agree. And social too. Yes. And with social now, because before you didn't really even have social, did you? No. When I started, I think we had Facebook and I think Pinterest was just getting going. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so if you were brand new and you were just getting back started, what advice would you give someone? I know you've already laid down a lot of advice, but if you were looking back at Miss Kari Ann when you were just getting started and you knew nothing, what would you say? I, oh girl, I got, I got, I know we're only limiting this to 15 minutes, but I got 25 hours of advice. So like, that's not like, I love all these questions. This is amazing. So I think if I was talking to that little Kari Ann, I would say to her a couple of things. Number one, I would tell her to have an editorial calendar, which we've already discussed. Number two, I would tell her to start looking at trends that were out there. Um, there is an amazing website, which I didn't have when Kari Ann started her blog, but it's called Exploding Topics. And it tells you what is trending and what is coming into the marketplace. I would look at Pinterest trends. I would look at any trends that you can see. And I would tell Kari Ann to write post and speak to those trends before they became popular. Because then one of the amazing things to make your blog relevant, if you can catch a trend before it becomes oversaturated, it is gold. So I would spend a lot of time on trends and SEO. And I just think there's gold in that for sure. Oh, I love that. So uh, what motivates Karianne? Oh my gosh, Melanie, so many things. Like, first of all, I love, I love this world. I love this world we call blogging. Like I eat, 
and breathe it and sleep it and talk about it and wake up every day and want to do that all over again. I, I love it. I love getting to connect with amazing individuals like yourself. I mean, you have inspired me in so many ways and, um, just your brilliant business mind and how you look at everything, um, going to see people's content and watching them grow. And, um, I have a coaching group and in that group, just to see the women, oh, I mean, it's like my, like I'm almost about to start crying about it. I mean, it's like so overwhelming to see people go for their dreams and achieve their dreams. Like there's nothing like that in the whole world. So let's lean into that. Tell us a little bit about your group, how it started, what your thought process is about it. Yes, I've actually had the group for a year now and we are opening it up again right now. And it is $10 a month and it is probably the biggest wealth of information you can find anywhere for $10. Like, I mean, like you spend $10 on Starbucks and a muffin, you know, nowadays. So, but you, what you would get access to is there are 24 old Zooms of me talking and specific actionable tips that are incredible. And you have access to all of those along with a workbook to kind of guide you through all those. And then we do a new Zoom every single month. All of that for $10. Like, let's go. Let's go. So best value ever. It is. That is the best $10 you will ever spend. And that's just the Karianne part. There are a lot of bloggers in there that um, are doing a great job. And, you know, you have access to them as well. So that's right. We And people, we have share threads, we have you know, where we just lift each other up and encourage each other. And it's really become a family over there and a community. And, and I think, you know, in this world of online, sometimes encouragement is in short supply and it is in that group in bucket bowls for sure. It's an amazing, incredible group of influencers. We have some Instagrammers, we have some bloggers, we have some business people and that have all come together with the sole purpose of making money and growing their business. What does the future look like for Thistlewood Farms? Oh, well, it's so bright. I got to put my shades on. So, (laughs) oh my gosh, so many amazing um, brand collaborations coming up. So many projects I have. Um, I have some really fun retreats in the work, works with um, some incredible individuals and Oh gosh, Melanie, 2020, the rest of 2021 and 2022 are going to be such an amazing time. I agree. It's so inspiring. So where can we find you? You can find me at Thistlewood. That's T-H-I-S-T-L-E, like the plant, thistlewoodfarms.com. You can also find me on Instagram as Thistlewood, Pinterest as Thistlewood Farms, and Facebook as Thistlewood Farms. Perfect. And we'll drop all of that good content and links below. Uh, you can check out Kari Ann's group, her blog, all the things. Get on her list. I would highly encourage you to do that. And um, oh, you're just amazing. Thank you, Kari Ann, so much for being on. Thank you. And thank you for inspiring me every day, Melanie. I so appreciate you. You're welcome. Have a good one. You too. Thank you so much, my friend, for listening to the podcast. I'm blessed every single time you come back and listen to an episode. It's especially amazing when you share it with others on social media. So be sure to follow Creatives on Fire online. Listen, if you have not already done so, I want you to go ahead and download the five ideas I personally used to explode my online audience growth to a six-figure following. You can find that at creativesonfirepodcast.com. I appreciate you. And until next time, stay inspired.